Hey there, Saints. Pastor Dave here with another Wednesday devotional for you. I hope your week's going well so far. It's off to a good start. Uh, Today we're going to talk about temptation. And I'll start with a reading from C.S. Lewis. This is an excerpt uh, from Mere Christianity. He says, You may remember that I said the first step towards humility was to realize that one is proud. I want to add now that the next step is to make some serious attempt to practice the Christian virtues. A week is not enough. Things often go swimmingly for the first week. Try six weeks. By that time, having, as far as one can see, fallen back completely or even fallen lower than the point one began from, one will have discovered some truths about oneself. No man knows how bad he is until he has tried very hard to be good. A silly idea is current that good people do not know what temptation means. This is an obvious lie. Only those who try to resist temptation know how strong it is. After all, you only find out the strength of the German army by fighting against it, not by giving in. You find out the strength of a wind by trying to walk against it, not by lying down. A man who gives in to temptation after five minutes simply does not know what it would have been like an hour later. This is why bad people, in one sense, know very little about badness. They've never, or they have lived a sheltered life by always giving in. We never find out the strength of the evil impulse inside us until we try to fight it. And Christ, because he was the only man who never yielded to temptation, is also the only man who knows to the full what temptation means. The only complete realist. I've always found that idea that uh, Lewis introduced there really interesting. Um, Something that he said, you know, was a current fad in his day was people saying, well, you know, you're you're a goody two-shoes. You don't know what it's like to really be tempted. Uh, I think people are still saying that today. And I think his point is still just as relevant that if you are a resistor of temptation, you really understand it. You've really felt its power more completely, more fully, than someone who has given in to temptation. Uh, You think of it like this. I I have a sweet tooth these days. I am trying to uh, cut back on my sugar intake, on my my sweets and and that kind of thing. And um, the longer I go, the hungrier I get, right? The harder it is to hold back. Now, if I just went ahead and ate whatever I wanted to eat, as soon as I wanted to eat it, I would never feel that hunger. I would never understand how hungry I could get or how much I could want that Snickers bar or that piece of chocolate or whatever it is. It's because I resist that temptation for however long I am able to resist it that I really begin to feel hungry The longer I hold out, the more I feel it. And so Jesus, as Lewis points out, is the only one who really knows the full weight of temptation, the full strength of temptation, because he's the only one who never gave in. When Satan came to Jesus in the wilderness and gave him those three temptations, uh, Jesus resisted. Jesus pushed back. And Jesus never gave in. As good of a human being as you or I may be, we always eventually give in, don't we? We might hold out for for weeks. We might hold out for months or for years. But at some point, we fail. At some point, our force of will fails. And And when that happens, we might think, oh yeah, now I really know what it's like to be tempted. But we don't. We don't because at some point we always give in. The longer we hold out, the more we know the truth of temptation's power. And the more grateful I think we should be that we know Jesus, the one who did not give in. Saints, I hope that's helpful for you to think about this week. That's your devotional, and I'll be uh, praying for you as you try to resist whatever temptations you might be up against. Keep praying for me, 
and I will see you again soon. Hope you stay well. Y'all take care. Bye-bye.